This is a boom arm that I picked up six months ago. Um, actually, I, I bought two of them. And I was able to uh, get some light stands and these boom arms from a studio that was kind of cleaning, you know, inventory. So they were happy to get rid of the large items. I knew a little bit about this, uh, not a lot, but I had read about it before buying it. And to be honest, I was more interested in other items that, that I picked up during that sale versus just this. But uh, what I found is that th this boom arm is something that I use a lot and really enjoy. So if I'm working with Flash, um, easily over half of the photos that I'm going to take with Flash, I'm going to be using this boom arm. So um, I want to try to explain a little bit about it, try to explain how you can get one new, and tell you how I set it up and use it and why I like it. And I'll also say that if you are thinking about a boom arm, a standard path that most people I think would go down is to get a telescoping steel boom arm. I've had those. Uh, those are great. Um, and they have an advantage of allowing you to get your light uh, uh, further away from your light stand. So that that is one of the knocks or one of the cons of using this one is that the distance is 32 inches uh, if you have the boom parallel. Uh, from the end of the boom to the light stand. You can buy a, a larger version of this to get it further out, um, but its claim to fame is allowing you to easily uh, adjust the orientation of the strobe once you have it set up and balanced. And uh, for me, that that uh, that's made my work with strobes a lot more enjoyable. So, um, the, the one of the features here it, that I like the most is that when you raise the arm, if you look at the head, it's pointing directly towards the ground, and when you lower it, uh, it's still pointing directly towards the ground. It doesn't lose its orientation, and uh, that red bar at the top is what uh, allows for that magic. I'm not a mechanical engineer. But I'm sure they would know the term for this, uh, and. That means that if I am setting up a, a scene and I am not entirely sure where I want my light to be, if I want my light to be, let's say, overhead, how far away from the subject, um, once I get it into the position that I want, I just, uh, you know, with one hand, I grab the back of the boom and raise or lower it to, to its desired spot. Um, it does come with a dedicated sandbag. It's actually a shot bag for steel shot. Uh, mine, you know, when I picked it up used, did not have that. Uh, so what I end up using is a uh, cloth shopping bag, and the, the bag is already holding cables that I use for power and also for connecting to my strobes. Maybe 15 pounds. I haven't really weighed it, um, but you can adjust the uh, distance of your counterweight closer to the light stand or farther away by just unscrewing these two uh, knobs. The knobs are really secure, even in a down angle, it, it's not slipping. Uh, and so once you get the boom arm balanced, then to raise or lower it, you're using one hand. If you want to rotate it, let's say on the light pole to the left or to the right, it's one hand. Uh, it'll spin in the light stand. There's no ball bearings there, uh, but you know I haven't had any problems trying to spin it. And um, the light stand, I should mention this, you're going to want to use a junior light stand. Uh, it will take a baby light stand, but baby light stands, you know, they're kind of, they max out at maybe 25 pounds if you get, or like one made out of steel. Um, the ones made out of aluminum may not have that same weight bearing capacity. So junior light stands, they're, you know, they're made for heavier fixtures. And, um, so yeah, they're also junior light stands are kind of expensive. This, this boom, um, came with three junior light stands. So uh, I didn't have to buy another one. Um, the other thing is that if you want to adjust the orientation of the light uh, to point it, you know, 
uh, backwards or forwards, you can do that with this handle here. And what I mean by that is if I wanted to, let's say, point the light towards the fence, then uh, you know I could move the handle to point it towards the fence. And if um, I wanted to point the light towards the camera, again, I could use that handle and just twist it. Um, and it, wherever you position that thing, there's no clamping down after you get it into position. In fact, the only thing you clamp down on this, there's two things that you clamp down when you set this up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, one is the light. <coughs> Excuse me. And the light is connected to a baby pin. The baby pin's got flat sides. It, I think it's hexagonal. I haven't really counted it. Uh, and by having the flat sides, once you connect your lamp or your strobe, it, uh, it stays put. It doesn't want to drift or uh, droop or slide around the, the baby pin. And the other thing that you are going to clamp down is the adjustment for the sandbags. So these two little screws here. Other than that, any type of adjustment that you want to make, uh, you know, you're going to grab the back of the boom to raise it or lower it. You're going to grab the handle uh, if you want to adjust the orientation, you know, have the light point towards the back of the scene or towards, you know, the front of the scene. And it works really, really well. Uh, it is uh, secure, so big bolts, big nuts. Um, the the everything about this is is solid, uh, and it's fairly lightweight. But um, it, I get a, a fair amount of confidence out of using it that my lights aren't going to fall. So yeah, that is kind of my take on uh, using one of these. Um, the, if you're looking for something to get your light really far away from your light stand, then you're going to want to get a longer version of this. Um, and you know, even the short version, like you're looking at here, they're, they're, they're kind of expensive. Uh, and by the way, you can't buy one from this company anymore. I don't think Calumet markets them, but on B and B and H, photo, uh, and this is not a plug for them, nor for the company that I'm going to mention, um, but if you were to buy one new, then you would find it under a brand called Cambo, C-A-M-B-O, and then Red Wing, R-E-D-W-I-N-G. So if you look up Cambo, Red Wing, boom, on B&H, it'll take you to this unit with the Red Wing sticker on it. And Chimera also makes one. Uh, they make great soft boxes, so uh, those are also on B&H. So I think it's C-H-I-M-E-R-A. And you can get uh, the short version like you see here, or you can get a longer version. Uh, I've, I've seen an interesting video with a professional uh, portrait, you know, sports photographer. So I think this guy does professional athletes. And he uses the longer version for this to do portraits. And that's because, you know, he might be shooting a team and one player comes into the scene and is a certain height and a different player comes in and is taller or shorter. And so this allows him to uh, get the strobe positioned where he wants the strobe with literally just one hand and super quickly. He doesn't have to raise the light stand or lower the light stand. And by the way, when you have this much weight on a light stand, it's really easy for the thing to slip and, uh, you know, pinch a finger. I've done that a few times. Um, not a lot of fun when that happens. So that is another reason that I enjoy this, too, is for no other reason to be able to raise or lower the light without having to raise or lower the light stand. So I hope that helps. If you have questions, uh, you know, leave them in the comments below. And... Um, yeah, I, I enjoy using this. I use it um, more, more often than not when I'm shooting with the strobe.